Hey Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. It's Michelle, your Practical Priestess here at Divinely Genuine. So we're here to do your Uranus Transiting Taurus Tarot Reading. So that's like a transit that's lasting seven and a half to eight years. I think it's seven and a half years. Um, so, um, and I'm using Tarot Illuminati cards. Bada bing! I have blessed them, communed with spirit, and shuffled the deck, and now I'm ready to cut the cards on camera. I can get it on camera. And it is for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Alright. We're doing a planetary spread, which consists of um, seven cards. Each representing, there it is, each representing a planet and, um, like, each, each position representing a planet and then having a meaning that it is reflecting to how it's affecting you in, the, in your life. Okay? Alright, so we've cut them. Card one is Saturn. Then we've got Mars, Venus. Mercury, Jupiter, Moon, and Sun. Okay, let's do it. So yeah, you can always refer back to this video um, to see like over, you know, the next seven years. Let me see if this is better. This is probably better actually. Anyways, um, yeah, you can refer back to the video since it's such a long transit to see, you know, if it resonates to see, like, just to keep the guidance going. Okay, so Saturn card is representing what is ending in your life. Um, it's karmic return, endings in time, the issue approach from the perspective of the inevitable. All right, and we are starting with justice. Nice. Could represent a Libra in your life, but it is representing, so what's ending during this Uranus in transit, in, uh, in transit, in Taurus transit, sorry. All right, so that is a major arcana card, which suggests in tarot that uh, for major life changes, um, Uranus switching signs will bring that, you know, which is what this reading is about. So the justice card is the scales of cosmic balance. Balance, adjustment, sorry, hold on. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, justice card. So what's ending in life for Aquarius, sun, moon, rising, during Uranus transiting Taurus. Balance, adjustment, consequence and effects, weighing things out, being at the fulcrum of a balancing act. Equilibrium, maintaining the center, justice, morality, um, and law, order. So things could get a little out of balance. It could be referring to um, something in the court system that finally comes to an end. Um, you could stop having to be in between two opposing parties, uh, that kind of dealio. So then, let's move on to card two, is Mars. Mars is representing force and aggression, ambition and competition. The issue approached from the perspective of ego and self. Or, what is in conflict or imbalance in your life? And we've got a reversed Four of Cups. So reversed in this reading represents an inward state. Four of Cups, um, Cups typically represent emotions, and Four is the house of home and family. The Four of Cups, however, is the closed doors of the heart. And this is what's out of balance in um, life right now. Okay. So balance has ended, what's out of balance in this reading, and the Mars position or in conflict is the closed doors to your heart. 
past hurts leading to denial, despondency, and disappointment, missing opportunities due to dwelling, due to dwelling on sadness or the past, being close to love, emotional stagnation, feelings of boredom, feeling like you have been dealt a bad hand. So just basically sulking and feeling like, you know, the victim mentality deal, which has to go away. You've got to heal that so that you can attract better in your life. Okay. So then we're going to move on to, that's out of balance, right? So we need to pay attention to that during the seven year transit and um, try to balance that out and keep your heart open as you heal. Because I feel like there's a balance to that. Anyone who gets hurt doesn't go right back to it. You know, you got to take some time to self care, self love, and all that jazz. So card three is Venus, representing love, beauty, harmony, union. The issue approached from the perspective of bringing about peace, harmony, or inspiration. Your emotional world and relationships. Okay. And we've got the Four of Swords reversed. Four of Swords reversed is going to put on a more inward state. Let's see. The Oracle of the for Fertile Mind. Stillness and peace in the mind. Rest and recuperation. Pause and taking a break. Seeking answers and meditation and sleep. Setting aside worry. Quiet and solitude for thought. Retreat into the self for healing. Yes, that's perfect for what we just had with things getting out of balance, um, conflict with closing your heart, and now you take your time to, to take a break, recuperate, rest, go within, set aside worry, quiet solitude for thought, retreat into self for healing. It's perfect. Resolution of thoughts, ideas coming from stillness. Yeah, just be, just practice just being. Okay. And then we've got the, ah, I'm like going to hide myself, sorry. So now we're in the fourth position after Venus. What do we have? So we did Saturn, Mars, Venus. And then it's Jupiter, Sun, and Moon. Oh, it's going to be Mercury. Mercury is the mind and intellect, word and wit, the issue approach from the perspective of reason. Okay. Or your intellectual world and thoughts. Okay. And we've got another reverse, and it's a princess of wands. Reversed being... Just an emphasis on it being a more inward state. And so that's your mind and intellect, the princess of wands. I believe wands typically in tarot represent the mind and ideas, creative ideas. Um, court cards as like the princess can represent people in our lives. So the princess of wands is the fuel of the fire. It's instigation of desire, first spark of passion and inspiration, desire acted upon, fueling and ambition, making your impulses a reality uh, through application. Somebody with endless energy and passion, somebody starting a project or just setting out for a goal, an object of desire. Beautiful. So you're feeling very fiery and inspired and ambitious and wanting to Give that endless energy and passion to your projects or to the object of your desire. And that is very much where your mind will be um, during this transit. Which is a beautiful way to handle the, in my opinion, the imbalance that Saturn is kind of leaving. 
uh, or coming into at this new stage, the closed heart that is um, a result of pain. And then the need to heal and kind of be yourself and, be, you know, have that down quiet time with the divine and your higher self. And then what do you do with that pain that you closed your heart to? You fucking turn it into ammo for your passions and your desires and you become inspired by it. It's awesome. Yes, yes. So now we're going to go to Jupiter. Jupiter's position is where you're taking action. Uh, it's growth, expansion, action, friendship. The issue approach from the perspective of the social world. Uh, it's your actions and outward being, your goals. Okay. Interesting. And we've got the Nine of Swords. And this is things that go bump in the night. Nightmares and terrors, I believe. So, this is what is outwardly being expressed and I think that then would mean we have to heal a little deeper into the subconscious as that's sort of where our dreams are born. Uh, nightmares and night terrors, fear and being afraid, worry and anxiety, sleep deprivation and problems, mental illness, Feelings of guilt, worrying too much about something, making a mountain out of a molehill. Health being adversely affected by anxiety. Okay, so this is in your position of Jupiter. This is where you are being asked to grow and to expand and to take direct action as you evolve, right? And so when it's a card like this, what the universe is saying is this is the issue Please grow and evolve from this. Please heal yourself so that you can get the rest you need. Heal yourself of the worry and the anxiety, okay? This is your time to do a lot of healing. And then we're going to go to the moon position, which is representing your inner world. Not, not so much the emotional world as it mentioned Venus. Um, and this is in the spread, okay? This isn't like how the planets affect us. I mean, it's pretty like point on, but it's, it's a little different in the spread. Um, so the inner world meaning more like your intuition. Uh, the moon is receptivity and intuition, dreams and rhythms. Uh, the issue approach from the perspective of intuition. Your inner world. Okay, and we have the Princess of Swords, reversed, reversed, taking on an inward state. Let's see what this Princess, powerful, powerful card, has to say. Oh, this is a very Aquarian card, actually. It's the fixing of new ideas. It's a genius, an inventor, someone who enjoys analysis, the beginnings of an intellectual pursuit. Freedom of thought, rebellious thought, a free thinker, fixing new ideas in reality, freedom from preconception or unquestioned ideas. Okay. Very Aquarian card. So we've got this need to try to maintain the balance that is leaving. A need to not become too out of balance um, in the area of your closed heart. Okay, so you need to open that up a bit. You need to do that by healing and taking some time to get quiet and be alone with spirit and your higher self. Do some healing. You take that pain and turn it into your passions and inspiration for what you desire. Things keep you up at night, you're anxious and worried, and you have to heal that too. A good way to do that um, subconsciously is to listen to things while you sleep. 
It could be uh, just music. Crystal bowl sounds is good. You could listen to I Am Affirmations, uh, Prosperous, that kind of stuff. Um, but it really does heal the mind. It really does. And then we come into your inner world on all these new ideas. And maybe that's what's keeping you up at night and causing a little bit of anxiety. Because you are Aquarians fixed um, air, right? So you're a little stubborn with your ideas, you know, they seem so concrete to you. Um, though they're free and flowing, but they're reality for you, right? They're, they're right, they're correct, they're what it should be. <laughs> so uh, loosen up a bit and allow your mind to heal and rest during this seven year transit. And so now we're ready to go on to the position of the sun, which is the seventh card. It's the center and vitality. It's truth and purpose. The issue approached as a synthesis of all the other cards or the main focus of your life at this time. And we've got the seven of pentacles reversed. Reversed in this reading, again, is taking on an inward state. And the Seven of Pentacles is patience and growth. It's planting the seed and being patient and waiting. It's the waiting game. Pentacles represent our self-value and self-worth. Also our resources or the value then reflected back to us. You know, how we know how much to ask for and what we're worth, right? What we're offering. Uh, Seven of Pentacles. It's the waiting game. Patient, slow progress, watching things grow, delayed results, paying attention to detail, diligence and hard work, more haste means less speed, awaiting an end result, tending to your daily life, waiting. Okay. So while you have these big ideas over these, this uh, long transit of Uranus and Taurus, as you have these ideas um, and this fiery inspiration, which you should try to implement, understand that the best things, you know, things of substance take time to build, right? And so don't let that keep you up at night and overwhelm you. Just try to do your healing and try to remain in balance. And it'll all be well. I love you guys. Thank you so much, Aquarius, for your support. I hope you liked it. And um, have a good transit. See you next time. Peace.